Investigating the effect of altered auditory feedback on self-representation, subjective operator experience, and task performance in teleoperation of a social robot. This study aims to improve an operator's user experience in teleoperation of social robots, focusing on the unique aspect of the teleoperation, that is, the operator needs to speak as the robot. The key idea is to apply real-time altered auditory feedback, or AAF, which is a method of transforming the acoustic traits of the speaker's voice and feeding the transformed voice back to the speaker. We hypothesized that by having the operator speak while listening to a real-time AAF of voice transformed to match the robot's appearance, it would be possible for the operator to effectively become the robot, that is, to transform the operator's self-representation. The contributions are threefold. First, we propose the idea of applying AAF to social robot teleoperation, focusing on the fact that teleoperation is an experience that involves a transformation of self-representation for the operator. Second, we investigated the effectiveness of AAF in the teleoperation of social robots by conducting a field experiment in an actual bakery to find out how AAF benefits the operator. Specifically, AAF was shown to be beneficial in several aspects of subjective operator experience, but did not affect task performance. Finally, by combining both quantitative and qualitative findings from the experiment, we discussed the design considerations of voice interaction in teleoperation interfaces. Let's begin by clarifying what is meant by teleoperation of a social robot. Social robots are defined as robots capable of human-like social communication and are expected to provide a variety of services, especially in public places, such as airports, cafes, hotels, and shopping malls. However, although they are becoming more commonly used, fully autonomous social robots that can provide natural and compelling communication have not yet been realized. Teleoperation, where a human operator remotely controls robots, is considered a promising approach to overcome the current limitations of autonomous, service-oriented social robots by allowing the teleoperator to communicate with local users mainly by voice. However, for teleoperation to become truly successful, the teleoperation interface must be easy to use for a wide range of users, such as reducing the operator's workload, that's why we explored how technology can support teleoperators of social robots in the service field to help them work more easily as well as to improve the quality of the services they provide. One of the unique aspects of voice-based robot teleoperation is that the operator is expected to speak as the robot, which has been recognized empirically by those who have practically used teleoperated social robots in various fields. Indeed, studies have shown that users who interact with a robot do not accept the robot favorably when its appearance does not match its voice. Here is a video of a professional voice actor serving as the operator for a childlike robot. In this way, an operator who can operate the robot in an engaging manner does not merely match the acoustic features to the robot, but also flexibly adapts various aspects of the voice, such as speech and linguistic content. Then, how can we make it easier for any user to speak as the robot? The simplest configuration, that is, outputting the operator's speech as is from the robot, requires skill and effort. Also, depending on the gap between the operator's natural voice and the character of the robot, there may be limitations. So, a typical solution is to transform the operator's voice so that it sounds natural as the robot. In this case, real-time voice conversion is important to achieve interactive communication. However, since voice conversion technology is not yet perfect, the fully automatic, natural, and real-time conversion to a robot-like voice, speaking style, and linguistic content remains limited, even with recent advances. 
From the perspective of HCI research, we considered a different approach than a complete speech conversion technique. It is to help operators elicit the ability to role-play different self-representations by AAF, that is, by altering the acoustic properties of voice input and feeding the altered voice back to the speaker. Although our novelty lies in the application of AAF in the context of social robot teleoperation, the idea of using AAF to transform self-representations has been established by previous research. In fact, studies have shown that AAF affects the speaker's psychological state. For example, when an emotional tone of voice is changed and fed back to the speaker, an emotional state consistent with the manipulation is elicited in the speaker because the speaker attributes the properties of the manipulated voice as due to his or her own emotions, which is explained by self-perception theory. Also, in another study that applied this phenomenon to interpersonal relationships, Participants who received voice feedback with a calmer tone felt less anxious and stressed when they had conversations. Moreover, AAF has been shown to influence the speaker's self-representation. Arakawa et al. proposed the concept of digital speech makeup, which enables voluntary modification of self-representation through AAF using real-time voice conversion. They demonstrated that young participants who use the AAF of an elderly person's voice perceived that voice as their own. In addition, they showed that the participant's self-representation changed by using the implicit association test, a well-established method for measuring changes in self-representation and self-identification. Another study explored the effects of visual and auditory feedback of becoming a child in immersive virtual reality and found that the semantic congruence between them is important. Specifically, the discrepancy between the two decreases the sense of embodiment. They also found that the use of child-voiced AAFs in combination with child avatars increased the participants' speech pitch in a way that approached that of the feedback voice. Thus, we set three research questions regarding social robot teleoperation in a service context. First, does AAF transform the operator's self-representation toward becoming the robot? Second, does AAF make it subjectively easier for the operator to perform the service? Third, does AAF improve service performance objectively? To answer these research questions, we designed an experiment where participants teleoperated a robot placed at an actual bakery storefront to verbally serve real passers-by, with three different voice conditions as explained later. Specifically, participants were asked to speak in an engaging manner as the robot by talking to passers-by, introducing products on sale, and talking to people who stopped in front of the robot. They were instructed to emphasize two aspects, service and role-playing. Thirty individuals, half male and half female, participated in the experiment as teleoperators. There were three within-subject voice conditions, no voice transformation, voice transformation only, and voice transformation with AAF. In the no VT condition, participants' speech was output from the robot as is. In the VT-only condition, the pitch and formants of the participant's voice were transformed to match the robot's appearance in terms of gender and age. In the VT-AAF condition, in addition to VT being applied to the voice output from the robot, the transformed voice was fed back to the participant in real time. We measured multiple indicators for each research question, including both subjective and objective measures, referring to previous studies. For more details, please check the paper. The following few slides summarize the experimental results corresponding to each research question. Regarding the change in self-representation, the subjective measurement indicates that the use of AAF fosters a change in self-representation of the operator, compared with the VT only and no VT, but this was not observed with objective measurement, namely the implicit association test. As for subjective task evaluation, although all indicators were rated better in the VT-AAF condition than in the no VT condition, 
The comparison between the VT-only and VT-AAF conditions showed that whether or not VT-AAF was more effective than VT-only was mixed according to perspective. In particular, the use of AAF in addition to VT may improve enjoyment and motivation and decrease the psychological effort of speaking as the robot. In contrast, the overall mental workload and psychological effort of the speaking engagingly aspect were not significantly influenced by the use of AAF. As a general preference, 87% of the participants preferred and would like to use VT-AAF again the most. Lastly, for the objective task performance, we measured the total duration of speech between the operator and local users and the total amount of speech from the operator. The conversational duration reflects how much the operator's speech could attract the attention of local users, whereas the amount of speech reflects the operator's motivation in speaking. However, no significant effects of voice condition were observed for objectively measured task performance. In summary, we found the following findings for the research questions. First, does AAF transform the operator's self-representation toward becoming the robot? The answer is inconclusive. When AAF is applied, the participant's self-representation changed significantly to align with the character of the teleoperated robot, as evidenced by explicit measurements but not implicit measurements. Next. Does AAF make it subjectively easier for the operator to perform the service? The answer is yes, but sometimes voice transformation itself is enough. Compared to no VT, the use of VT reduces mental workload and eases the non-teleoperation specific service aspect, that is to speak engagingly. However, the use of AAF further increases the operator's motivation and enjoyment and eases the role-play aspect, that is, to speak as the robot. It is also worth highlighting that 87% of the participants preferred the VT-AAF method the most. Lastly, does AAF improve service performance objectively? We did not find any significant effect of AAF on task performance. However, given that this is the first study to examine the impact of manipulation of operators' voices on task performance in practical and commercial scenarios for teleoperated robots conducted in a real field setting, it should be emphasized that this is not a result that makes a strong claim of no impact on task performance. Considering these results, our general recommendation is to apply VT at the very least to reduce the mental workload of the operator of a social robot in service contexts. Additionally, to make it easier for the operator to speak as a robot and induce positive emotions, such as motivation and enjoyment, we suggest applying AAF in addition to the simple use of VT. Furthermore, when applying AAF, users should be able to adjust the volume and transformation. This is because most participants preferred AAF and got used to it quickly, but there were a few who took some time to get used to it. Last but not least, it is also important to use a low-latency VT system for feedback. This is because even delays as small as 50 milliseconds can cause speech inhibition as a result of delayed auditory feedback. To recap, we explored whether and how the use of AAFs can benefit teleoperators of a social robot in performing conversational services as the robot, based on the idea of transforming the teleoperator's self-representation to align with the robot's representation. This study is the first to explore how the use of voice transformation technology influences the teleoperator's subjective experience in a practical, real-world scenario. We believe that the ideas and findings of this study can be extended to a variety of different scenarios, such as virtual avatars, where one would want to act as a different character.